Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be talking about the new Solo Shadow eyeshadows from Merit. And although I do like these shadows, there are some things about them that I thought that you would want to know about before you think about whether or not you might want to buy any of them. I have three of the shades uh, that I purchased. One is called Mid-Century and it is a medium brown. One is called Viper and it is a green color. And then I have one that is a dark blue, which is called Midnight. So I will be using each of these in a five minute makeup look using all Merit products. So you can see what they look like uh, with some other products from the company. Uh, in addition, toward the end of the video, I will be trying on all of the Merit lipstick colors and also a couple of the lip oils. So you can see what they all look like in natural light. So first, a little bit of information about me. I'm 59 years old and I have dry and sensitive skin. I'm very careful about what I put on my face in terms of both makeup and skincare products because I really don't want my skin to be irritated at all. In addition, I uh, really prefer to spend only five or 10 minutes a day uh, working on my makeup, uh, at least in my real life. And so I uh, try to pick out products that will help me to achieve a fairly natural and quick look on a consistent basis without uh, very much effort on my part. So for those reasons, I'm very enthusiastic about the Merit brand. I have tried all of their products and I have done well with all of them in terms of their not irritating my skin at all and in terms of them working for me uh, and going on really easily and creating a, a quick and natural look. Uh, I do like some of the products a little better than others, but overall this has been a really good brand for me, so I'm really interested in anything new that they have to offer as well. So Merit was started in 2021 by a woman named Catherine Power, who is like a serial entrepreneur. So her other ventures have been a skincare line called Versed, which is available at Target and uh, some other retailers. And she also uh, started the online um, beauty magazine, beauty and fashion magazine called uh, Who, What, Where. And she also co-founded a wine company focusing on organic type wines called Aveline. So she is focused really on uh, clean type products and uh, the merit was described as an antidote to the overwhelming uh, world of beauty. So there was just supposed to be a few uh, products and it was supposed to just be products that you could spend only five minutes a day putting on and look a little bit better and a little bit more polished. And I feel like uh, the, the products that they've released so far have all uh, achieved that mission pretty well. So there are some people that are not really enthusiastic about this line and I think that those people tend to be those who spend a lot more time than that putting on their makeup and want to uh, use more colors and blend them together. And for me, I feel like this, this makeup line is really well matched in terms of my own lifestyle and my own uh, a way of approaching how makeup go, should go on for me. So it seems to me that uh, the main target for Merit is uh, really the millennial generation. So there are people that I guess used to use Glossier when they were younger and then they wanted something that was a, a little bit uh, cleaner maybe and a little bit more upscale and grown up. But it's still the basic concept that you shouldn't spend too much time and that it should look really natural and uh, kind of pretty and not be something that you need to focus a lot on. So I think I'm a little bit older than their prime target market market uh, at being in my late 50s but I think that the products have worked really well for me and that they seem to be really uh, designed for uh, to work well with skin like mine as well as the skin of people that are more in their 30s and 40s. So since Merit is mostly run by Millennials they seem to have found their primary home on Instagram so they put a lot of information about their product on there and what when they were talking about this uh, new eyeshadows on Instagram they talked a lot about how they they had stopped wearing eyeshadow because it was too complex and they didn't want to put on all those different shades from a palette and that they were kind of longing for the days back in the 1990s when people would just put on one color of eyeshadow and not think about it a whole lot. So this is supposed to be more of a soft wash of color uh, that you're not spending very much time on, that it's only really supposed to take you 30 seconds to put, put the product on, and it's supposed to 
be a very fairly soft color that is not supposed to create a real dramatic look and is instead just supposed to uh, blend in with the rest of your natural makeup look. I really don't get any sense at all that these are designed to be layered. I feel like these are really designed to be used one at a time. So there's eight different shadows and that would be potentially eight different looks. And I don't really think that they're even uh, thinking that you're going to buy all eight of them. It's more that you're going to pick out one that, that appeals to you and uh, use it up and then maybe buy another one later on. And I did see one YouTuber try to mix a couple of the different shadows together and that did not really work out very well at all. I think that these dry very quickly on the eyes within seconds. So while you can uh, add some more of the shadows to your eyes to make the color richer. When you start to blend them together, they really don't blend with other colors very well. So this is really designed as a one and done shadow. So the color choices are, first of all, there's four neutral shades that are shades of a, sort of a mid beige up until a, a, a fairly dark brown color. And it could be that you would choose one of these shades uh, to be really kind of a neutral, uh, to have really a nude look based on the color of your foundation. Or you could pick one that's a little bit darker or maybe even a little bit lighter uh, to create a, a more obvious makeup look. And then in addition to that, there's four other shades that are supposed to be color shades. Uh, one of them is the dark blue that I'm wearing right now. There's also the, the green color. And there is a lavender, which is almost a neutral. And then there's a gray shade, which is a, a little bit more on the dark side, kind of like this blue color is. So a couple of other things about these shadows. The first one is that I feel that all of these colors have a kind of mucky color about them. So they're not straightforward shades. They're not pastels. They're not bright colors. They all seem to have a lot of grayish, brownish type colors in them. So for me, I find that to be really appealing. And that's what I've always found to be really appealing about Merit's lipsticks also, is that they're not straightforward colors. And so, especially for me, with my uh, sort of low contrast, uh, soft autumn type coloring. I feel like they really blend into my face a lot more easily than pretty much uh, anything else on the market in terms of the lipsticks. And I think that the eyeshadows are doing that as well. The other factor here is that these are super long wearing uh, eyeshadows that really stay in place until you take them off. And then even then you need to really make a, a big effort to take them off. So they go on very quickly and very easily, but then they are really budge proof. Uh, and, and I've found them to be budge proof in terms of both using them as shadows and also as eyeliners. I found them to be really more budge proof as eyeliners in terms of this using this blue one especially than really any other eye eyeliner that I have in my collection. So I find that to be really impressive. I do think you will need to choose a, a really uh, heavy duty uh, makeup remover in terms of something that's oil based to take them off. So I pr really prefer for that kind of makeup removal the Lisa Eldridge makeup remover uh, that I think has been really terrific for me if I just put that on my face and then leave it for two minutes and then uh, wipe it off with a tissue. It really anything that I might have on my face comes off right away and then I can just uh, splash it with a little bit of water and I'm done. I've also found that the pharmacy makeup removers have worked really well for me. I prefer the fruit scented ones in that because they don't have essential oils in them, but they also wash off the face very easily. So I'm using the strawberry one now, and then there's also one that's an apple that's on the market right now that I find to be uh, work fine also. And the other thing that I've uh, tried using that has been okay is the typology uh, oil makeup remover. And that has uh, worked out fine for me, but I do need to use a second cleanse with that one. But in any case, uh, you will want to use some kind of an oil-based makeup remover. I have not found that Meissler Water works very well with it or any of the other regular cleansers. They uh, don't seem to remove this eye makeup at all. So one thing to know about these eyeshadows is that the application is a little bit different than most of the other cream eyeshadows that I have used. So in the most cases, when I use cream eyeshadows, it's a, a, certainly a creamy formula. I pick up a lot of it. It's kind of, you know, soft on my fingers and then you rub it in and then you can blend it and put on less or more. In this case, it's a very, very stiff formula. So it almost feels to me sort of like the 
the uh, Honest blushes or the um, Mob Beauty blushes and that it's quite stiff and you can only pick up a very, very tiny amount on my finger. And then I can use that and it will um, turn into a much more sheer color when I put it on my face, but it's certainly very stiff and I think that that stiffness is part of why it lasts so long on my eyes. So it is not something that you can put on that is going to uh, be something that you can move around a lot. It dries very, very fast, so you have to work quickly to put it in the right spot. But because it uh, turns into something that's very sheer and because these colors are so mucky, I don't think it really matters that much in terms of putting it on exactly if it's a little bit uneven from eye to eye. Uh, people probably aren't going to notice that much. So, And it, it, it's not like you can probably uh, easily overdo it in terms of putting on too much of the product, at least with your fingers. So this is all very different uh, for me. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of the MAC Paint Pots, and I think that that's probably what they're mostly basing this concept on. Uh, most of the ingredients seem to be similar to the MAC Paint Pots, and they, they work fairly similarly. As with the MAC Paint Pots, I think that you certainly could use these as a base uh, to uh, start out by priming your eyes and then to put a bunch of colored other color shadows on the top of them but they're not really recommending doing that they're really recommending just using this as a one and done so they are suggesting that there are three different ways to apply these products so the first one is just to dip your finger into the pot take out a little bit and then put it on your eyes and in that case it turns into a very very sheer wash of color uh, the second thing that you can do is to take uh, this little brush that they uh, also sell and this has a uh, two different uh, brushes, one on each end. So you could take this brush, which is supposed to be for all over color. You, you rub it around in the pot until you get a fair amount of it off. And then you um, rub, rub it on your eyes until it creates a, a more uh, stronger wash of color. So you could uh, keep applying it until it got to be as strong as you liked in that way. And it, it does seem to go on a little bit thicker with that brush. And that is fairly easy. You just have to make sure that it's even because you can mess up a little bit more if it's a, since it's a thicker layer. And then there's also this, which is supposed to be, I think, like an eyeliner brush. So it's a very hard brush and a very sharp point. And so you can pick up a fair amount of this and then use it uh, on your eyes, uh, either just on the top or on the top and the bottom. So I actually put on some of the, the blue color on the top and the bottom of my eyes today. I don't usually put any eyeliner on the uh, bottom of my eyes, but I feel like this, is, this works so well that I thought I would give it a chance. And it's also supposed to be like the 1990s aesthetic. So I'm like, okay, well, that's what we did in the 1990s is put put a lot of eyeliner underneath the eyes. And I think that this has worked out really well for that. So I am just so impressed at how well this holds up. When I did this the other day, and then I went and took my dog for a walk and I got all sweaty. By the time I got back, my eyes still looked exactly like they do now. So it really, as an eyeliner, it's really holding up remarkably well, in my opinion. So overall, on the one hand, I feel like these are fairly easy to work with and that uh, it's you're probably not going to mess them up as much with most eyeshadow palettes or even most eyeshadows. If you use too much of it, you can look really garish. With this, there, it seems that they're kind of muted and understated enough that you're probably not going to mess them up too much. And even if you try to do something dramatic like, like this eyeliner look, it still looks up, uh, it's still pretty easy to work with. On the other hand, I feel like it's a little bit more fussy than the other Merit products that you need to uh, focus a little bit on putting them on. Just simply opening the containers is a little bit of a, a challenge. So if my hands are not totally dry, I find it hard to actually get the containers open. And then uh, sometimes, especially if I don't have the right lid for the right container, uh, that uh, it will be hard for me to actually get the container to be closed and they need to be closed enough that they click. And that requires uh, sometimes a little bit of uh, moving the, the, the uh, cap around or sometimes they just don't seem to want to click into place. And I do feel that if you don't click those lids into place that the eyeshadows are going to 
get really, really dried up fast. So I don't feel like this is super simplistic and just the, the idea of having to get out the eyeshadow and get out the brush and put it on exactly right and close that lid up. Uh, it's, it's adding quite a bit more time to my five minute makeup uh, routine that I always want to do. It's not the easiest eyeshadow that I have to put on, but I do really like the way that it looks at the end and I do like the, the colors in terms of these grungy type colors. And I, I do think that it's, it creates a, a natural look. In terms of the ingredients, these are silicone based uh, shadows. So the, they're fairly similar to the MAC paint pots in that they don't have any cyclic silicones in them. So they do qualify as being clean at Sephora. For the ingredient list, they don't list the ingredients for each individual shadow. Instead, they have a may contain list uh, at the end that is supposed to cover all of the shadows. So for instance, it lists blue number one on that list, even though I think that's probably only in the blue shade. Uh, and it also lists aluminum powder on that list. So when I realized that, I was a little bit upset about it because I know that I do react to aluminum powder and aluminum powder is a 10 out of 10 on the uh, EWG scale. So after some conversations with uh, a merit representative, she looked into it and talked to the uh, product development company. And then they finally said that uh, of, of the shadows that they have released so far, at least in the US, that uh, none of them have any aluminum powder in them. So I was happy about that. I, it seems like maybe they will later release some kind of a shimmer product and maybe it will have aluminum powder in it, but that has not happened yet. I do think it would be nice if they would tell us what uh, ingredients were in each individual shadow because some people do se seem to be really sensitive to particular synthetic colors, particularly when it's in eyeshadow. I think that synthetic colors are more irritating when they're in eyeshadows than they are in things like blush. So I'm hoping that they will go ahead and release that information on the specific colors that are in each shade. So now let's move on to the demonstration. So I will try on each of these eyeshadows uh, at the beginning of each uh, look and then I will put on a full face of all Merit products including a lipstick and a cheek color to kind of coordinate. Although really with Merit you can wear really anything with anything and it seems to always look fine. I did notice when I looked at that footage from yesterday that there were some moments on the video that you could see my bra strap on the video and I don't really feel like going back and reshooting all my footage just because of that. And this is just get ready with me footage so I'm not real concerned about it. But I think that if I am going to wear that, that top out, it's new for me, I'm going to have to either put a little jacket over it or maybe buy a dark blue bra, which I'm kind of interested in doing anyway. So please forgive me for that. So what I'm doing in the first video, I am putting on the shade Mid-Century, which is described as a warm brown. And I'll start out by putting that on with my finger and then trying to blend it in. You can see that it, this is not uh, entirely easy and that it does take a little bit of effort to get this right, or at least it did for me yesterday when I was uh, putting this on for the first time. I think that uh, it looks fine if I just put it on with just my finger, but it is a fairly light look. Uh, and then uh, if I just uh, blend it with my finger a little bit, it's okay. Uh, but I also am using another eyeshadow blending brush just to uh, even it out a little bit more. So I do think that this shade is a little bit darker, obviously, than my natural skin tone, but because it's a muted shade and it has a little bit of gray in it, I think it, it looks very natural on my skin and just kind of blends in. So I do like that a lot. So after I did that, then I put on some of this Merit Great Skin Instant Glow Serum. So this is a product that Merit reduced, released, uh, I think, last winter. So they are, they are suggesting that this is a hydrator for the skin and it also serves as kind of a primer. So it's a more like a, um, a toner rather than a serum in terms of the consistency. So if I just pat a bit of it on, it serves as a, a way to give my face some hydration and uh, also a little bit of a sticky tacky consistency that I do think works well with makeup. So I've been using a product that I think is similar to this called the 
uh, Honest Beauty Hydrogel Cream for quite a while, so it also has a couple of different kinds of hy hyaluronic acid in it and a few other ingredients, and it does create that kind of a sticky feeling on my skin that, that I do think works really, really well as a, a primer and better than most of the primers that I have used. This one also has some caffeine in it, which is supposed to reduce puffiness, and it also has Japanese golden thread root, which is supposed to be soothing, and niacin cinnamide, which is supposed to be brightening. So all in all, uh, I haven't had any problems at all with this product. I think it's been very nice. Uh, in the summer, I actually have been using this as a, just a, a sort of a one and done on my face in the morning and then putting on a, a lot more uh, serious skincare in the evening. But uh, in the winter, I would put this on over skin care. And then I'm working on my eyebrows. And my eyebrows are so sparse that uh, just putting on a gel uh, really doesn't uh, help them that much because I really don't have all that many eyebrows without uh, actually filling them in. So I am using the Jane Iredale uh, Micro Pencil to uh, first draw little hairs in my bra brows. And then after I'm done with that, then I'm using the uh, Merit uh, Brown 1980 eyebrow gel to fill that in. And I think that if I use both of those products together, I can get something that really looks uh, quite realistic and that uh, makes my brows look a, a lot less skimpy than they usually do. So of the brow gels that I have tried so far, I l also like the Jane Iredale one. I like the Kosas one, but I do like this Merit one quite a lot, and I bought this a couple of times, and I think that I wouldn't mind continuing to use this one into the future. And then as a foundation, I am just using the Merit uh, Minimalist uh, Complexion Perfecting Stick, which is supposed to be sort of a concealer and sort of a foundation. I think it's more like a concealer, and then I'm really just using it to cover over spot issues on my face. And I have two different shades of this. The lighter one is called Cream, and the darker one is called a crew. I think that my skin is uh, works reasonably well with both of these. When I've gone to Sephora and swatched all the colors, I haven't found that there's any that I feel has been perfect for me. But because this uh, is such an easygoing formula and it blends in so nicely, I don't think it really matters that much. I think that within reason, uh, the shades that I uh, several of the shades that I tried at Sephora work well enough to uh, give me a fairly natural look. So not too long ago, I tried out a bunch of foundation sticks and concealer sticks and cream concealers to see which ones worked best on my face. And I think that of all the ones that I tried out, I really liked uh, the Tom Ford uh, concealer stick, which is $60, so that's really expensive. And I liked this one. I think that both of these worked really, really well for me. And this one is a pretty good value in terms of you're getting a lot of the product and it's held up really well for me. So this, the, the cream one that I have here, this is uh, well over a year old and it's holding up fine for me. So I'm really happy about that. And then when I'm done putting on that concealer, then I blend it in with a, a concealer brush. So Merit makes one that's called brush number one that just is used to uh, brush the concealer into the face. But there are some other brushes that I have used for this as well. Uh, for instance, the uh, BK Beauty Angie Hot and Flashy, they make one that's like a concealer uh, kitten paw type of a brush that I think has worked really well. And Say makes a brush that works pretty well. So whatever kind of concealer brush you have will work fine with this. And then about a year ago, Merit released a bronzer stick, and I think that it just comes in five shades. So I have the lightest one that I'm putting on here. This is called Quince. I feel like when I put this uh, straight on my hand that it looks quite on the yellowish side. So I was a little bit surprised at that because when I put it on my face, I feel like it actually always looks fairly nice and fairly natural. And I think that the reason for that is because this is a very, very sheer color. It doesn't come in different undertones. It really just suggests that if you have light skin that you should be using this quince uh, color. And I think that for me, it's worked fine. Uh, it, it blends in really easily. I don't really need to worry about uh, making sure that it's all blended in. It doesn't really matter that much. But when I look at myself, after I put this on, I do think that I look better. And that just gives me a, a little hint of color. So I've been really uh, happy with this. And then in terms of the Merit lipsticks, these are really my very favorite lipsticks on the market. They really... Uh, 
feel a lot like a lip balm on my lips. They're very hydrating. They're not irritating at all. Uh, they taste good to me. They do have flavor listed on the ingredient list, and it's not specified, but when I uh, asked them about it, they told me that that was just raspberry oil, and I actually really do believe that because these taste really good to me. And what I especially like about them, again, is that they have this sort of grunginess about them, so they tend to have a little bit of like grayishness or brownishness to them that makes them not look like they're too bright, not look, make them look like they're too pastel, and that where they kind of just blend into my face. And I feel like they look pretty good on just about anyone, and that I can wear all of the colors of the Merit lipsticks, and that uh, most other people uh, can do so as well. So I'm really enthusiastic about them. They do have a little bit of a tendency to break, so I've had a couple of them break on me, but I have found that I've been able to either repair them or to just continue you're using them even though they are broken and they're not the most expensive lipsticks that I have in my collection. So, And so in terms of blush, uh, Merit offers a variety of colors of what they're calling flush balm. So they uh, come in a container that looks like this and then you can just put them on directly or use your fingers to apply them. I have found these to be very, very sheer and to go on really, really easily and to blend in to the point that I feel like I can use any of the colors on my face. So they remind me a little bit, for instance, of the Glossier Cloud Paint and that they go on just so easily and that uh, no matter which color I choose, I can make it work for me without really going to, to any trouble at all. So for this particular first look, I'm using a shade that's called Cheeky, which is called a cool pink, but I feel like uh, even though I don't always do really well with cool colors, I feel like this uh, uh, blends into my face really easily. So the next product uh, that is supposed to be for the cheeks is called the uh, Merit Day Glow, which is a highlighter. And this is a product that I, I did try, and I liked at the beginning. It gave a kind of a, a sheer and a, a slightly wet look to my face without a lot of sparkle. But uh, what I did also found was that after just a few months of using this product, it started to develop a rancid smell, and that the rancid smell got a lot worse as time goes on. And, to, and now it's really at the point where I don't want to put it on my face at all. And I have watched a number of other uh, people, at least six actually, at least six other people on YouTube mentioned that this has developed a smell for them as well. So I think this is kind of problematic. I really don't like the idea of having to throw out products after just a few months because they're uh, not working for me in any way. So I did not put that on today and I'm not really enthusiastic about buying another one of those. So I think that when this Merit product was released, it was a little bit unusual in the marketplace, but since then there have been a number of other highlighters that have been released that I think give a very similar look to the face, so I don't mind uh, using one of those. So for instance, this one is from Victoria Beckham, and I feel like when I put it on my face that this gives a very similar look to what the Merit one does, uh, but it I've had this one for over a year also, and this has not caused me any problems at all. Uh, it still smells fine to me. Uh, there's also this kind of uh, balmy highlight highlighter from um, Beauty Counter and from uh, Mob Beauty. These come in both sort of like palettes or, or little uh, pot type containers. And then Violette FR, which I did another video on, she has a highlighter that also gives this kind of a look. So I think there's a lot of choices and that it's not really necessary to use this Merit one. I wish that they could uh, fix that problem because other than, other than the smell, I think that it was a nice product. And then in terms of mascara, the mascara that uh, Merit Beauty makes is a tubing mascara, so it goes on very easily. I have not found it to smudge or to clump, uh, so I've been really happy with the product. I haven't found it to be irritating to my eyes. But I have gotten to the point where I don't really like to uh, open a bunch of mascaras at, at once because uh, I had a bad experience with one of my mascaras, actually the Tower 28 one, that after just a few months it ended up giving me an eye infection. So I feel like I only really want to use mascaras for like a month or two now before throwing them away. So at present I am using this Calare mascara, which I have found to be almost exactly like the... Uh, 
merit mascara in terms of the performance. It's also a tubing mascara. It also comes off very easily with water. It also uh, looks very natural on my eyes and it doesn't really cause me any uh, issues. So I'm uh, kind of alternating, you know, by whichever ones I have in, in stock. Uh, I do like this calorie one because it comes in these little tubes uh, and I've gotten a few of them for free but uh, they only cost like $13 each or something so I don't mind throwing them away after a month or two. But I do like the, the Merit Mascara fine uh, and as much as anything else that I've tried and so I'm sure I will be using that again in the future as well. And then at the end of the video here I am putting on uh, uh, some more of the eyeshadow using the brush, so putting it on a little bit uh, darker. Again, I don't think it's creating a real dramatic look, and I think it is attractive. It, it takes a little bit of effort to get used to putting these eyeshadows on, but it goes a little bit faster once you get used to the formula. So now I'm going to try on this uh, green version of the eyeshadow, which is called Viper, and it's a grayish green color, which I find to be really appealing just in general and especially in combination with my eyes, which tend to be a kind of a hazel brown type color. So what I did first is to put on just a little bit of this with my fingers and then to try to blend that in. And then I took the eyeliner side of the brush and I uh, put a little bit along my lash line uh, above my eyes and then I uh, decided to try a little bit below my eyes too and I'm really surprised at how easily that went on. I think that green eyeshadow usually looks pretty good on me but compared to pretty much all of the other eyeliners that I've put on, even in pencil form and certainly in pot form. I think that this has gone on really, really well and it does last uh, really, really well. So at first I thought, well, maybe I made a mistake. I should have put on concealer before the eyeliner. But in reality, when I put the concealer on, I was only very slightly careful about it. And I felt like I was able to put that concealer on quite easily without the eye eyeliner getting messed up at all. So I was really impressed with that. And then I'm just putting on this the makeup the way that I did before. So I'm putting on both the uh, Jane Iredale eyebrow pencil and then the eyebrow gel from Merit. And then I'm putting on, I skipped the bronzer for this look, but I put on some blush. Uh, for this look, I used a, a little bit of a pinkish type look. I thought that that would be kind of pretty with the green. So I put on the shade uh, Prey in terms of the blush and just a little bit more highlighter and then the lipstick that I put on for this one is Millennial which is a uh, the brightest pink they make which is still not very bright it still seems to have a lot of gray in it and then towards the end of this I put on just a little bit more of the green uh, to try to make it into a uh, a more saturated version using the the other side of that brush and I do think that uh, the more times that I put on these eyeshadows, the easier that it has gone on for me. So there's just a little bit of a learning curve here. And so because this works so well as an eyeliner when I use the green version, I thought that I would really focus with this blue version as an eyeliner and start with that. So I was thinking uh, about uh, what how we usually wore our eyeshadow back in the 1990s and about looking at uh, Princess Diana uh, talking in that BBC interview and about how much uh, dark eye liner she had underneath her eyes and I thought well why don't I just try to do a little bit of that since these people are so into the 1990s and they're trying to replicate some of those simple 1990s looks. So I started out by putting uh, some of this blue eyeliner uh, on top of my eyes and then underneath my eyes and not going all the way in but but definitely putting quite a bit on and I think that this has uh, really worked out uh, remarkably well. I still am not sure that I'm going to wear eyeliner like that again on a regular basis but in terms of emphasizing my eyes and in terms of really holding up I'm really really impressed by how that works so I put that look on again today and then I put on just a tiny little bit of a smudge of that uh, blue uh, color with my finger above my eyes. Again, I think that this is this darker color is a little bit more on the patchy side, especially when I put it on my fingers or even when I put it on with that brush. So I don't feel like this is really ideal to use as an eye uh, shadow for, for over my eyes, although I can do it. I don't think it looks bad. It's just a little bit more work. But I think as an eyeliner, this is working terrific for me. So I'm really impressed with that. 
And then for the rest of this look, again, I just put on the same things as before in terms of the brows. And I put on some bronzer and some highlighter. And then for the color cosmetics, I tried to stick with that 1990s aesthetic. So I put on the lipstick that is called 1990, which is a dark brown color. And then I put on a, a little bit of a, the blush uh, that is called Beverly Hills, which is kind of a peachy pink that's uh, uh, kind of innocuous on my skin tone. It really doesn't uh, look like anything except sort of a natural uh, muted type blush. And then at the end of this, I put on a little bit more of the blue with a brush. And I think that, again, it goes on okay, but I really think that uh, the best way to use this is, is as an eyeliner and then just to use a very small amount of this blue color uh, as a, a way to sort of bring that eyeliner up and, and uh, balance it out a little bit more. So overall, let's talk about a, a few of the things that I find to be a little bit problematic about these eyeshadows. I feel like, first of all, compared to really all of the other products that Merit makes, these are a little bit more fussy. So uh, it's not that, uh, if especially if you're familiar with the using makeup, it's not that you can't use them and it's not that they take a lot of time, but they do take a little bit more thought and a, a little bit more work than really any of the other products that Merit makes. So I would have kind of thought that if Merit was going to put out an eyeshadow, they might put out an eyeshadow stick. And that was is not really what they have done here at all. These do require a bit more work to put on. They do require a bit more of a learning curve. Uh, just simply taking the, the top off and putting the top on uh, requires a little bit of effort. I would think that, especially if you have any issues with arthritis in your, your fingers, that this would be particularly difficult for you. And I think that uh, even for me, if my fingers are even a little bit uh, greasy from other products that I put on, that uh, it makes it quite difficult to uh, take these tops off and that I really need to wash my hands before I do it. And then I, I really do have kind of a fear that I'm not going to put the top on uh, correctly or tightly enough and that the eyeshadows are all going to get dried out and be useless to me. The other thing about this product that bothers me a little bit is that their usage life is only six months. And I don't think that probably even if I didn't have very much makeup that I was using and I was trying to get down to a core collection, I still am not at all sure that I would get anywhere close to using this up in six months. And I, it's not so much that I feel bad that I have to buy a new one. They're not all that expensive. But I just kind of have gotten to the point in my life where I don't like buying things and then throwing them away. And then especially since this is in plastic and this is black plastic, which may be less recyclable than other kinds of plastic, I'm not sure. Uh, all of those things make me a little bit uh, annoyed about the idea that this is uh, going to have such a short usage life. Now I do really like the way that this kind of a wash of a single color on my eyes looks. But I think that it's also worthwhile comparing it to other products that you uh, might be able to use instead to create a similar look. So one of the products that I have used uh, the most and that I've really been the most enthusiastic about recently is from Mob Beauty and it's their uh, Cream Clay Eyeshadows. And when they first came out with these, they were all in these uh, really uh, bright pastel colors that I'm like, well, that's pretty, but I don't really feel like I can really pull this off on a regular basis. It just looks a little bit uh, too bright for me and a little too overwhelming of my whole uh, look. But more recently, they've come out with a bunch of uh, colors that are also quite grungy looking. So you can see those in this little palette here. And I found a lot of these to work really, really well on my eyes. Now these are not quite as bulletproof once I put these on uh, my eyes. They they probably are, are going to come off a lot easier without my having to use a special makeup remover for them. Uh, I think that maybe for people that have uh, oily eyelids, maybe this would not be as good for them. But for my eyelids, they have, uh, they've held up pretty well on my eyelids. 
and I find that I can use them very easily to create a really sheer and pretty look. And I really love these colors. So I think this has really been a palette that has been overlooked by the entire uh, beauty industry and the entire YouTube community. I've seen almost nothing on it, so I think I need to do a whole video on uh, these colors and this palette because I think it's really terrific. Maybe the problem with this is that it is called the Spring Goth Collection, and every time anyone hears the, the word goth, they get afraid and think that their makeup is going to look really crazy, but in this case, it's worked out really beautifully for me, so I think I need to show that off a bit. I think that if you like the paint pots, that you will uh, probably really like the Merit products as well. Those are fairly similar, I think, except I think the Merits uh, are... The colors, I think, may be better than the colors that uh, that uh, MAC is currently offering. The MAC paint pots do list aluminum powder as in the main contain list, but I managed to pry out from MAC that a number of the shades actually do not have aluminum powder in them, and all of those have been fine for me. I haven't found those to be problematic at all in terms of their irritating my eyes, but in terms of the colors, I do like those Merit ones a lot better. The other kind of product that I usually think about with regard to a fast one and done eyeshadow look uh, is a eyeshadow stick. And uh, the one that's come out most recently that I really do like quite a lot is a line of products from Victoria Beckham. So she has several different colors. Some of them are uh, kind of the same matte type colors. So there's one that's about the color of my skin. And then there's one that's a more of a brown color. And I think that both of those are really great. She has a few that are mildly shimmery colors and one that's a, a more of a shimmery highlighter color. And then a couple that are bright uh, uh, pastels, one that's pink and one that's yellow. So I think that those, uh, this particular formula has been terrific for me and so I'm hoping that Victoria Beckham might come out with a few more shades. I also have used the Laura Mercier sh uh, eyeshadows for quite a while and I do like those. I talked about those in the video that I did on Laura Mercier. So I have nine shades of the Merit lipsticks including one that's called Aperitif. And then toward the end of the video I have two of the lip uh, oils. One is more of a saturated color and kind of a peach color. And then the other one is more of a, a clear color that has a little bit of a color changing thing that it turns into a bright pink. But that all in all, that those are really my favorite lip oils on the market except for the Typology lip glosses. So I think that the all natural light that I'm using to swatch these lipsticks on my lips will give you a better idea than the uh, website photos do in terms of what these actually look like in the real world.
So thank you very much for watching all the way to the end of the video. Please let me know in the comments whether or not you would be interested in these eyeshadows or if you've tried any of the other Merit products or if you've tried the eyeshadows already then please let me know what you think of those. In addition if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel then please go ahead and do that. And Coco and I love you very much so thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. Thank you Coco.